Welcome to Mobile Armor Radio, the podcast for all things Mecha. Jump ship incoming. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another amazing episode of Mobile Armor Radio. I'm one of your hosts, Brian. I'm Chopper. And I'm Rob. Yeah. I, I like your positivity. You think it's going to be excellent. It, it, we'll see. It is an awesome episode. I mean, <laughs> if, if Bill and Ted can make a comeback, you, the rest of us can also be excellent. There you go. So uh, Just hard to argue with that, right? That's true. That is exactly. That is logically impossible to argue with. I, I think that's something that Socrates himself said. Socrates. <laughs> Socrates. I gotta watch those movies again. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. But uh but we're not we're not here to talk about Bill and Ted. We're here to talk about giant mecha robots. And uh yeah, so I think with that we're gonna head on from the jump ship and head on over to the drop ship. Sounds good. Dropship landing. And welcome to the dropship, the section of the show where we talk about all the things that we could have been working on uh, <laughs> if we had more time. <laughs> that doesn't sound good, Brian. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I guess I might as well start off this section by saying I haven't had much time to uh, to to put anything um, mecha related together. I will say. It's been kind of the reverse, actually. Uh, I think I mentioned before, I've got a move coming up, and so I'm in the process of packing all of mm. my my mecha. Did you guys find uh, a place? Yep, we, we've got a place kind of lined up, uh, waiting to, to hear back on, on the specifics. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to be moving into an apartment, which means I'm going to have a lot less room uh, since I'll be with one other person. <laughs> And a that dog. True. <laughs> uh, it's all about shelf space. You just have to find lots yeah. of shelf space. You're going to have yeah. to just get those uh, shelves. That's basically what it's, you're going to come down to. Yeah. I hit so up an Ikea. Thing, do you guys have I, Ikea I, there? We do yeah. somewhere. I think there's one. Uh, I actually already have a whole mess of – like in, in my, my current place, I had – one uh, bookshelf dedicated entirely to like the figurines and mecha and models and stuff. Like a whole shelf was Macross only, nice uh, kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, it'll it'll be a, a fun transition to be sure. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's gonna be... excuse me, Pat's dying by the way. Yeah, yeah. Pat, Pat's, Pat's <laughs> this got might be, that. This uh, might be uh, a momentous episode where uh, Chopper dies. <laughs> yeah, he's got that general grievous asthma thing going on. Uh, so, so, um, but yeah, so I, I, I packed up like all of my, um, pretty much all of my, my mecha kits and, and stuff like that, getting it all boxed up and ready to go. Uh, still a, a month or two away from the actual move itself, but figured might as well get started. Um, but yeah, it's, I had fun. Uh, I have one of those um, uh, Macross, you know, VF1, uh, the Skull Squadron one. It's uh, of the Revoltech line. Yeah, I got one of those. They're cool. Yeah, the one that can uh, transform between the three different modes. Yeah. And I've had him in uh, the Batroid mode forever. Oh, yeah? And so, uh, the box that he came in though is the flight mode. Yeah, yeah. So that was fun to. You couldn't remember how to put him back into flight mode? <laughs> put him back into flight mode. Yeah, they're, they're very <laughs> delicate, those things too. That, 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 that qualifies for my modeling. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 uh, assembly, uh, for this, this month. Um, but yeah. So what have you been working on, Rob? Uh, I have been doing my Monster Apocalypse Guard Starter Force Defender X. I uh, hopefully will be playing Pat. By the time you hear this, we'll have already played. Hopefully, yeah, I'm we going. Might even, we might even have filmed the battle report. Yeah, maybe. We're going to. I'm going to. Well, we're both going to C2E2. So 
uh, uh, it'll already have, actually it'll just be happening actually I think when this comes out so if you're it'll to catch, end, it'll end oh no you're right this is February this is it'll be March first is in the is the Sunday of uh, the distant future of March first <laughs> that is the Sunday of of C two E two goes to Sunday too right yeah yeah so. So when this comes at, out, yeah, you might have a chance. You can come and see us. If you're at C2E2, come to the Mantic booth. Ask, ask yeah. where the Hellboy booth is. And, and, and <laughs> maybe we'll be there, but maybe we'll be at the Bandai booth. Cause <laughs> well, we'll be there, but one, one of us will be there at least. There you go. And, and stock up on all sorts of mecha at the Mantic tag booth. Teaming the, tag, tag teaming the, the yeah. Bandai booth. And yeah, it'll be, it'll, I, I have feeling lots of models will be being bought there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, we'll be, I'll be hopefully playing some Monster Apocalypse with Pat. So I, I painted up my guard force. I decided to go with a different color scheme than the box. I, I was like, what do I usually do? I usually do reds. I, I do a lot of blues. So I want to do something different. So I did, uh, I was like, well, Iron Man's always a good person to look at. So we had, Iron Man back in the day had a black and gold suit. And I based it on the black and gold suit for Iron Man, so that's what they are. And nice. he, he came out pretty cool. And uh, so it's a it's a mech with uh, I think four tanks and a support vehicle. I think that's what it is. And uh, so, yeah, a repair vehicle. Yeah, so it's it's good to uh, make them. It was fun. But uh, other than that, I don't think I've done any other modeling. It's that was what I was working on this month. So I got that done. So now I can start something new. I've been just playing with some Dead Zone stuff on my desk. That's about all I'll be doing now. What about you, Pat? You should be putting together your calf stuff. Yeah, no. there's That's a pile of stuff behind me. Or at least get them together and bring them so we can play. you got enough calf. I can just use some of yours. That's true. <laughs> I'm not transporting so, that. <laughs> well, now that I know that Rob's not bringing his calf, I'll stop working on mine. <laughs> well, you have to work on two sets, so I, I have to play one. That's true. You have to so, get some uh, uh, enemies. Yeah, L- L- uh, Lately Egg's been working on the calf stuff in anticipation for Rob coming out for C2E2. Uh, we're going to try and get a couple games in of a lot of the mech games. Uh, Pac Rim, he's supposed to teach me how to play. Yep, I still got to learn how to play that so I can teach you. Uh, <laughs> we're going to do some Monster Apocalypse. That's going to be fun. That's a nice, that, that's, from what I understand, it's a very easy 45-minute game, hour-long game. Yeah. So we should be able to run through that. Uh, so finished up my Monster Pocket stuff already. Uh, finished up the Gorilla Peeps. I need to get more Destructors. I have more Protectors than I have Destructors. Yeah. Um, I have the Mecha Godzilla and the Cthulhu, but no Cthulhu minions. So maybe I should get some Cthulhu minions mm-hmm. for that uh, Destructor. Uh,. But other than that, still working the calves. But I mean, it's just so much calf. <laughs> John, yeah. John, you gave us too much stuff, man. Yeah, I don't even know where to start <laughs> with that. It's just too much. I'm overwhelmed. I do love my t-shirt, though. I do, and I do love the models, man. They look great. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I just gotta, I just gotta focus. I gotta, I gotta narrow. I gotta narrow my mind. Narrow my, narrow my aim. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> uh, before I die. Yeah. <laughs> his last dying wish was uh, to finish his calf. <laughs> to play, to play exactly. more calf. <laughs> so I'm actually kind of curious to see exactly how many points I have oh. in Rock and Terran. I might sit down one day and just figure it all out. Yeah, because that's well, especially the uh, well Templars too. Didn't we get a bunch of Templars in the yeah, Kickstarter? I don't, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, so so. That's that'll be my unit, my faction. Once I actually get down to actually building one, it is pretty daunting because there is so much stuff. But uh, I'll have to break out the uh, army builder and uh, set it up, figure it yeah, out, make a list. Yeah. So uh, no modeling, just uh, cab. Just that's really it. Cab and getting south the last of the apocalypse. It's uh, been fairly cold the last couple of weeks. mm Hmm. Uh, so, I haven't been doing too much in the basement. Uh, Pretty but, chilly down there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, once I get the walls up, the insulation in, it should be good. But, 
But that's about it. Just Cav and Monster Pacos. Nice. I've been, I didn't, you know, I still got the, the Thundercracker I need to put together, but now that I hear that there's a Megatron out there, I need to get him at C2E2. Save it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, wrong wrong segment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, with that, I think we can find ourselves on over to the Comstar. Message from Comstar. So, welcome to the Comstar, and and Pat, since you were you were already raring to go in that, why don't you start us off? <laughs> uh, all right. So, since I was hushed. <laughs> uh, I was told by our illustrious news guy Rob here that uh, there's Fury has released a, a Megatron Decepticon kit. I guess they have a Megatron Autobot kit. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. If it's not released yet. We'll see when it's released. Uh, well, I'm hoping it'll be a C2E2. That's the place to release it. Yeah, it's uh the new one has been announced. He's quite. He's different from the uh, old one, so it's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, still reading the. Oh my god, I'm almost dying. <laughs> Don't die. Still trying to finish up the the books uh, that Ashley Chapman. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. the, the ones on Amazon. Up. Yeah, so I got the. I've almost done with book two, and I got to get book three. How are they? Good reads? They're really good. Yeah, I, I would I would recommend them. Like I said, uh, we gave a shout out to, and I forgot his name already again. Jesus, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> Stop bringing it up. Yeah, no. Well, I don't want, I just don't want people to think that I don't remember it, but I don't because I'm stupid and don't see that. You're uh, also dying, so that doesn't help. <laughs> it's true. Uh, but it was a good read. It was a good suggestion. Uh, I know Rob picked up some set of books that I'm interested to read, but I'll let, you, I'll let him talk about those. Uh, but other than that, uh, just plodding through the, the Mad Dog books, so. Nice. That's all I got. <laughs> well, Rob, why don't you, uh, pick that up then? What, what books have you been reading? I refuse to talk about that. No, uh, <laughs> uh, well, right now I'm still reading my Battletech books. I'm still going through those, but I'm going to take a break because I did pick up uh, one of our listeners, John Bear Ross. He has a, a new book called uh, Breakthrough Junction World Book Two. Just came out on uh, on Kindle. I think you can get hard copy too. I got it. You get Kindle. paperback because I think I want to buy it in paperback. Uh, there's book one and two are both available on Amazon. We'll have the links in the show notes. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading those. Once again, it's, he's he's a uh, mech guy, so it's going to be all fun stuff in there. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to read those. But uh, yeah, Breakthrough Junction World, they're called the series. So nice. He says well, a I think lot of mech- Junction World's the series. Breakthrough's the book. Yeah, he says there's a lot of ro- robots fighting. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. Uh, once I actually read it, I will let everybody know how that is. Maybe I'll read it on uh, the trip. We'll see. I do have a lot of time on airplanes, so. It's true. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's, that's excited about that one. I also, uh, I finished off my, uh, Palladium Robotech RPG collection. I finally got the last of the original books. So I have all, oh, yeah, yes. yeah, I got them all. Somebody from England was selling them, so I had to ship it from England thanks to eBay, yeah. but. I got, I got your new one here. Yeah, we got the new, the new, uh, Robotech. I have to check that out. So it'll be fun. Does that include the uh, uh, the Russian side of things? I remember one of my buddies had had a book that had like the Russian Robotech, was, like Max and stuff like that. Oh, quite possibly. There's a lot of books. There's I don't know, yeah. twelve books, something like that. I haven't looked through them all, but other than just to look at them, but I haven't really read them all yet. I just wanted to have the the collection. I I used to have the original Robotech one back in the day, and uh, so I wanted to get. Then I realized, oh, they're they're pretty rare, and it was hard, but I finally got them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can get the like the original Robotech book. That's everywhere. They must have printed millions of those. But it's the other. Yeah. It's the later ones actually that are harder ones. Uh, other than that, news, uh, Battletech, the Hairbrain Schemes game, one more free patch is coming out at the, the, right around now, actually, I think. 
And uh, but after that, that's the last for BattleTech for now. They're doing their own projects for a while. Hopefully, in the future, they'll do Clan Invasion or something. But right now, mm-hmm. that'll be the end of the line with BattleTech. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was a good run. Like I, I don't think you can complain yeah. too much what we got from a Kickstarter for BattleTech. It was pretty yeah. good. No, I think it was really. I think it was like a solid game, man. It was uh, turn based. It's everything you wanted. Yep. Yeah, I'm. I'm really excited to see what that studio do, like does next because yeah. I mean they they did all those the Shadow Run yeah, games, I love those that games that came out yeah. recently. They, those were so good. Yeah, I still have to play Hong Kong. Uh, it's fun. The expansion there, but uh, yeah, the the BattleTech was a. a a fun breath of fresh air, I think, to that that franchise. Yeah, it's they everything they've done. Hairbrain Schemes has done so far has been great. So yeah, I will. They're one of my favorite uh, companies. So mm-hmm. I have to check out what they're doing next. And another one of my favorite companies is Kids Logic, the ones doing the Macross BattleTech minis, and they're up to the new newest uh, um, releases are are uh, available for pre order. And, uh, then, uh, they, um, announced even more coming out, so it's pretty good. Jesus. So if they're up to 20, wow. 21, I think they're up to? I was gonna say they're up to a lot of models now. So the newest ones uh, that are on pre-order are, uh, the VF1A Batloid mode, but it also has alternate heads, which is nice now. They have the VS, VF1S and the VF1J heads for it, so they're gonna, they're, they're kind of getting their feet under them now. And they're realizing they get some more selection. Uh, they're doing a <coughs> Battleoid uh, reconnaissance set, set of three. They, the Battleoids, they do sets of three, which is fun. And they're doing a Z- Super Veritech VF1J, but also has the VF- VF1S and 1A heads. So once again, so you get the armored and the regular. I think the selection is getting pretty good now. And th- I love the poses. I love the detail. I'm collecting them all. And they're really great. So I'm really excited about the Kids Logic. They keep uh, teasing that they might do a game, but right now it's pretty much if you want to play with them, you're probably going to be using Robotech Tactics, which uh, you can get now for anywhere pretty cheap. So twenty-five dollars. I don't know though. It's probably getting to the point where it's it's not cheap anymore because everybody's bought all those sets up. So we'll have except to keep an eye on one out. set. <laughs> yeah, the, well, except for the set at uh, Brian's store, which is still like a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's still pretty pricey. <laughs> It's still in the clearance section. I'm going to go ahead and say Gen Con, I guarantee you I'll find it for 25 bucks. Yeah, I might get it just to get the rule. I have like a bunch of the minis, but I never got the rule books. I never got the actual starter set, so I, I might pick up a starter set just to have it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I can use it with the, cause I've heard, everything I've heard is that the actual rules weren't bad. It was just the release that was horrible. It was everything that, that Palladium and, and Ninja Division screwed up was the problem. So. Yeah. So. We'll have to check that out. And yeah, Fear Eye Megatron's coming out. Uh, there's another one. There's another uh, Fear Eye. Or I think, I don't know if it's Fear Eye or if it's um, the other higher end version. I think it might be the higher end ones. The, uh, what are they called? Those ones? Um, the really expensive ones that uh, Flame Toys oh, make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what they're called. But they're doing like, a. T- Ken, Kenta, Kento or something uh, like that. Kuro Kuri, that's it is. Yes, it. Uh, they're doing a Tarn. He looks really cool, but those ones are expensive. They, they're really nice. But I do like their little kits. I like the style they do for them. So I do, and the models go together really well. Uh, I just wish that they would made a Constructicon to size. Yeah, he's not. He's not as he's bigger, but not at, as big. Like he's he's yeah. bigger than their average one, but not huge. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I can't wait for more of these models to come out. And uh, they are licensed, so it's nice because you can always get unlicensed stuff. But it's nice to have the licensed Hasbro ones. Yeah. And Oops. we'll see. We'll see what else they put out. Uh, other than that, I don't think there's anything else that I can think of. So, Brian, is there anything you've been doing or thinking of? I've been thinking of all sorts of things, but <laughs> but uh, as far as like what I've actually been doing. Um, the 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 closest thing I've been working my way through um, one of the StarCraft novels. Uh, again, it's the the Heaven's Devils one. So it's a, a prequel book series to the the original StarCraft game. Hmm. Um, and uh, you know, StarCraft is is definitely like one of those quintessential uh, you know sci-fi space 
uh, RTS games out there. Oh yeah, it's huge. And they still play it in uh, Korea, it's like professionally. Like, oh, yeah. That's like a huge thing. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah, and uh, I, it's 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 one of those franchises I always like coming back to every now and then. Um, it, it's you know I get the same kind of vibe from my Dead Zone gaming and stuff like that. Uh, so it's always kind of fun to to revisit. The, the stories that came out of that, that game series. Um, and then, uh, otherwise, like, I have been, uh, prepping for Adepticon. Uh, it's coming up. I'm gonna be playing in the Dead Zone tournament. And I, t- I don't think I'm gonna be planning to win. Uh, I'm gonna be bringing my, my Earth Federation Forces OH team. <laughs> <laughs> nice. GCPS Force. And if you know anything about the GCPS, you understand why I'm not planning to win. Uh, <laughs> oh, they're good. Is they're really hard to play, but they they almost yeah. won a few tournaments. You have to know yeah. how to play them. Yeah, yeah. you really got to know how to play them. And I don't know if <laughs> my kind of themed list is. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, because because it's a theme list, I don't know if I can really flex the true strengths of uh, of that force. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it a good run. I I think it'll, if nothing else, it'll be a whole lot of fun. I was gonna say, uh, as long as you have fun. Yeah, I I enjoy showing them them off. I know I know Rick's probably uh, gonna be a little upset that like, uh, you know, I I won't say that I'm like a top tier player, but like the last two champs have come from Michigan. Yeah. And um, and so that's that's gonna be. Uh, and I know I think one of them is not going to be in the Dead Zone tournament. Yeah, that's right because yeah. they're playing Vanguard or something at the same or, or Kings of War. Uh, I think, King, right? Kings yeah. of War, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, unfortunate scheduling, but um, but so it's like uh, you know maybe maybe the the mantle is going to go to to a different area this time. But uh, I I'm excited to represent both you know Michigan and Mobile Armor Radio. And <laughs> yeah, and Gundam in, uh, in the go. Dead Zone tournament. So I think uh, Coach would have some of the same. Yeah, we got uh, yeah the the New York crew is coming up to play this year. So that's that's true. So it's it's going to be a, a tough field. That's that's to be sure. Is uh, uh, I figured since Rebs Rebs are most likely going to be represented. Uh, I know a friend of the show Jeff Burbage is uh, is going to be playing Rebs. So that'll be fun to see. Nice. He's never played them before. <laughs> is the last year's winner Corey coming back? I believe Corey will be back. Oh, there you go. Uh, so maybe I he can pull up your Michigan side. Yeah, yeah. Corey's a great guy, and yeah. uh, we've he's he's been able to come to a couple of our local tournaments and stuff. So it's always fun to see him. Uh, great, great, you know, competitor and player, and and I don't think anyone team. from the the Midwest the. The Nebraska side is coming, or the Southwest. Oh uh, no, Shane Screw! I don't think anyone from Shane Screw is coming this year either. No, right? Yeah, I find Depticon's getting to be that way. It's like <laughs> the timing is not working for a lot of people. This well, year, at least. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, Gen Con, we get the uh, big groups coming out. So that's more summer, so that works for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so prepping for that been been really kind of uh, working on building a list for it um, to to see you know just tweak and adjust and I've been listening to like the team building exercises and stuff. I'm gonna so to learn what not to do. A little bit of learning <laughs> what not to do. <laughs> no, don't die. Don't die. But uh, it's 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 fun. I'm gonna see if I can get some gaming in with them. Uh, like like I had. I did have fun doing my Xeon Marauders list. I want you to uh, take pictures of your Fetties in action. Yeah. Oh, I'll definitely take pictures of the Fetties in action. Uh, maybe some action shots too, not just at the beginning and end, if I can remember to do so. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, I should bring my mug with me. There I won't go. have anything in it, but. <laughs> you could drink water out of your mug. Yes, because you must drink a lot of water at the depth gun, otherwise you'll die. Yes. It is good to stay hydrated. Um, but yeah, so that'll be that'll be a really fun time. Uh, it's always a blast to to play a dead zone and be hang out with all those guys. Um, so looking forward to that. 
Um, nice. but otherwise that's, that's kind of the most of what I've been up to, uh, apart from again, more packing. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Once you get cleared up for that, I'm sure you'll have a lot more time. Yeah. I'm going to try and set aside stuff that's like, okay, this is packing and it's going to stay packed. This is, this is like, oh, here's, here's a model kit or two that I might be able to work on. And so <laughs> keep that closer to the top. Well, the key is to get your fiance into building models so she can build some of those. <laughs> exactly. That, that, uh, not going to lie, it's probably going to be a pretty hard sell. <laughs> but, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a shot. Still trying to get her into Dreadball, so. There you go. Oh, that's fun. Working on that. <laughs> the first step is getting her to build the models with you. Mm-hmm. And then you roll the game in later. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. One of these days. I think it'll be, hey, Lazy Saturday. Hey, there's the this mystery game that I've got, Treadball. This mystery? I've never <laughs> played it. Let's, let's figure it out together. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, yeah. So I think that wraps up uh, Comstar. So let's head over to the Mech Bay Hainer and the main topic of the month. Now entering the Mech Bay Hainer. All right, welcome back to the Mech Bay Hainer. Again, uh, this is the section of the show where we talk about kind of a main topic uh, to, to kind of do a roundtable discussion on. And I thought it would be a fun one. It was, it was my turn to pick. And so I thought it would be fun to talk about uh, the AI systems that show up in a lot of these, these mecha franchises. And so, you know, specifically ones where it's like, uh, they're they're introduced to replace pilots, so we've got uh, a whole whole slew of them across sci-fi. Probably won't go as deep you know, into it as like you do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, <laughs> and uh, but you know just kind of speak to maybe some of our favorite uh, ones in in shows and and speak to why they they were uh, really fascinating. So I just kind of do a, a quick round table. So. Uh, Pat, since you started the last section, let's throw it over to Rob to kick us off. Yeah, so we're thinking AI and different things. I, obviously, I go to Battletech, but Battletech, there is no real AI. They kind of they, There was AI, I guess, back in the Star League, but they kind of got rid of it. That The whole point is to try to reduce the the horrors of war. I guess you, the moment you put an AI in a uh, robot, the horrors of war, it has less <laughs> uh, care about the little people it stomps on. But mm-hmm. uh, the one that really comes to mind, even though it uh, turns out they're not really AI, is uh, Pacific Rim 2. They they mm. started out, like, the whole point was they're, the pilots are being replaced with with the drones, pretty much. Yeah, obviously, by the end, spoilers, you find out that there was some uh, of the kaiju technology in there, too. But, <gasps> the gasp! But I, I always find it interesting. It's almost always that the, the drones are the bad idea. It's always like... <laughs> it's the, like it's it's replacing the human element that controls it is like the enemy of the the almost every story I find it's like mm-hmm. the 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 AI controlled robot is always bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if there's any examples when it's not. I, maybe Brian, you could think of some, but I think it's. I, I've, I've got a couple. Yeah, uh, that I might be able to speak to. There's. I have a lot. I mean. <laughs> I mean the IG88 from Sacrifice, or the IG11. Now that's an important one. I think it was the IG88 in in Mandalorian, wasn't it? No, it's 11s and 88s in Star Wars. 11 is in in Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the only AI, AI quote unquote AI I can think of. Drones, yeah. Yeah, drones, droids, droids. yeah, droids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, even robots. So I guess there is. It's it's yeah. I mean, this is a tough line because then where do you lump the transformers? It's true. All right, transformers right. AI. That's right. a good point. Because because in in the lore of that, they're really a people, right? They're, yeah. they're Cybertronians. They're, they're still they're, they're considered sentient, whereas the AI is not considered sentient. Yeah, it's the whole yeah. idea of the spark. They have the soul mm-hmm. kind of this. They he makes them sentient. So, I know there's that the whole line of what makes something sentient, what doesn't. I mean, that was a whole Star Trek episode. Remember? Yeah, data. <laughs> a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, um, but and, and that's that's often where the <coughs> like a topic that's kind of explored when when these things kind of show up in in some cases where it's like 
okay, you know, if it starts learning, like, does it learn good things? Is it, is it Johnny Five or is it? Yeah, I guess know. Ghost in the Shell. That's what that's. It's really about that too. It's mm-hmm. about the AI. Is it a? Is it a person? Is it real? And and Blade Runner, uh, twenty forty seven, the new one especially. It's it's like that's the whole point of that show. Is it, is it? Are they real people? Do they do they have a soul? Even if they are just robots and artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. And you kind of, I think, especially watching Blade Runner, you do fall on the side that. They act like they have souls. <laughs> so <laughs> what is it? What does it mean, right? To be sentient? Yeah. 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 In, in this case, um, like, like you mentioned, Ghost in the Shell, like the, the Tachikomas are the little yeah. like tank robot uh, dudes that they have uh, throughout the show. And if you watch the, the standalone complex uh, TV show, you really there's an yeah. exploration of them as they kind of continue to get smarter and grow. Yeah, because they're really like puppies really in the original one they're not much yeah. more intelligent than that but yeah they do get better and better <laughs> until they get reformatted at one point because <laughs> they were starting to get a little disturbingly yeah. too smart yeah i like when they have their little quirks and they do their little that's always funny yeah uh what about you brian i'm sure you got a lot more examples you you have the depth of uh anime knowledge to to draw sure. from <laughs> so, so like one of the big ones that most people are, might be familiar with uh for those that w- grew up watching gundam wayne is there was the introduction partway through the series of the mobile dolls yeah and so it was basically a version of a bunch of the suits that we had seen uh throughout the the series such as the leo um i think the taurus the uh I, I know they're all zodiacs, but I'm trying to remember what they are. <laughs> There's the serpents uh, later on, um, but basically they they're all kind of shown as like when this yellow light comes on in their in their little view screens. Um, that those are always represented that they're the the AI, the robots, uh, and they were using that to you know really replace the the soldiers and and to fight their wars for them. Um, and, and, and kind of the more bigger climax of, of that series, like a big part is, uh, this guy, you know, Trey's Kushranada, uh, leading a, a force of, let's, let's just call them suicidal, uh, <laughs> humans <laughs> who, who was like main plan of attack was to run into these, uh, mobile dolls because they just couldn't compete with them on any other level than, to just kamikaze into them. Um, but that, that was, that was kind of an example. You know, it's, they don't go much more in depth, uh, in that series, uh, exploring that. It, it really is just kind of that drone type technology where, Hey, these, these drones are, you know, all these robots can, uh, uh, if I recall, they were actually could be connected to a system where a human could control all of them and they could kind of work, together Mm -hmm. but uh for the most part that was the the big thing there so like you were saying earlier uh you know another other hash in the the story trope of we're replacing soldiers because you know it's cheaper kind of thing it's it's uh you know they're more efficient yeah they always (laughs) portray them as being better than human but in the end we all know the, the human pilot does better yeah so, uh, in, in a similar token, uh, in, in more of a, a actually U.S. movie series, uh, there's the movie Stealth that came out a while back, uh, starring a bunch of people. The only one I really remember is Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Jeff, Jessica, <laughs> I think Jessica Biel was it. I think you're right, yeah. And that Southern guy uh, who played, uh, the only thing I just really saw him in was that uh, movie. Was it Bradley Cooper? No, it was... Uh, Josh something. Uh, he played uh, "quote unquote" the bad guy in Ford vs. Ferrari just recently. Josh Lucas. Yes, Josh Lucas. Sam Shepard's in it. There you go. He, uh, he, he's probably a general in that movie. He's a captain, but yeah, he's oh, higher okay. up. <laughs> yeah. So, like in in that movie, a little little spoilers for this movie that came out in what two thousand five. Two thousand five. Yeah. Um. That, uh, basically they, they set up a, a stealth fighter and, uh, set it up with a, a computer 
AI program to be the pilot and uh, that it would be learning with these other three pilots who are, are testing these uh, jets out. And it gets like struck by lightning in a thunderstorm <laughs> and starts getting a little crazy. Yeah. Uh, winds up killing Jamie Foxx as it outflies him. Spoilers. I, I said spoilers <laughs> for this movie that's 15 years old. Uh, it reminds wow. me of Maximum Overdrive. I think it's the yeah. same, same event happened. <laughs> But uh, at, at, by the end, like it turns around and it's like, I feel bad about doing that and I'm <laughs> going to help the humans now. Uh, so, you know, same same kind of thing. It, it's something where we're starting to see that in, um, I think, you know, modern military. Again, this is 15 years ago. This was science fiction that was probably more science that is being tested uh, currently. Um, but yeah, that, uh, you know, this is definitely a real world application. Sure. I mean, but I always feel like the portrayal of AI is the bad guy, like we said earlier. Well, look at the, look at the Matrix, right? Yeah. But if you watch the Animatrix, the, the prequels kind of for the Matrix, they'd show the whole robot rebellion. And it's, well, the humans treated the robots yeah. like crap. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, I mean, what, but then, they, but then you have the, the you have Skynet. Yeah, Skynet yeah. and Terminator, yeah. That was that was another one on my list of AI kind of going crazy, taking yep. their mechs and robots and mm-hmm. uh, stomping on people. Yep, deciding that humans aren't worth it. Well, that's always a fear. Even Elon Musk has that fear. Is he's he's really against AI because he feels that the moment something becomes AI, it, a it'll expand exponentially any computer, mm-hmm. and then it'll decide that humans are pretty worthless and they, it doesn't need us. Like, that's the difference yes. in the Matrix. The Matrix, they found a reason to keep the humans around because we're batteries. But uh, he's, in real life, he's like, yeah, it would just... If <laughs> if it kept us at all, it would be as pets. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it, so. it could suck if done poorly. For yeah. sure. Well, that's, um, that's the whole point. It's an AI. It's art- intelligent. It's no longer controlled. So you... Like, you try to put the, those Asimov kind of robotic rules in, but if it's mm-hmm. intelligence, truly intelligent, it would ignore those. It's just like a person can ignore any rules, right? Exactly. So that's... Speaking, speaking of uh, iRobot, like, uh, for those that haven't read the book series, maybe, yeah. you know, the Will Smith movie is a lot of fun. But it's nothing I, like the books, yeah. <laughs> the, the book is very different. <laughs> yeah. And... It's it is fascinating because of how long ago it was written. Yeah. Um. But like the oh, you know, it's basically a bunch of different little test scenarios of these the the three main laws of like can't harm a human, have to listen to a human as long as you don't harm a human as part of that, mm-hmm. and then you can like the robot can try to survive on its own. Yeah, as long as it doesn't break um, the other two rules. <laughs> exactly, and so it's just a bunch of test cases of like that. Does that going work? Yeah. Awry. Yeah. Um, and it's it's really fun. Uh, it's a really cool read. Uh, so as far as a book series, go check that one out because it is it is a blast. Wait, you're telling me there's a book that's different than a movie that Will Smith was in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another good uh, AI books in is uh, I think it was Neuroman- <coughs> Neuromancer by William Gibson. I, I'm pretty sure it was Neuromancer was about the AI. You know, it was or was it Burning Chrome? It was one or the other. And uh, might have been. Burning, I think, and I haven't read Burning Chrome. Neuromancer did have an AI yeah. as, as a factor of. It was kind of like the end, was, end, kind of the boss of the whole thing, actually. But yeah. in that, it wasn't. It wasn't necessarily evil. While well, it was a bunch of AIs, really, they were kind of fighting each other. But mm-hmm. it, it was that was interesting because it was almost like a shadow organization under the nobody really knew it existed. It was just they were mm-hmm. kind of fighting their war quietly amongst themselves. And I, I like that whole idea where it's just, uh, yeah, this AI is happening, mm-hmm. but uh, we just don't know it because we don't need to know it. That could so, be happening now, so <laughs> <laughs> it could be. You never know. So another one that that some people might be uh, familiar with is uh, Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> yes, has gone through many phases of yeah. it becoming sentient and decided I just want to destroy Tokyo. Um, yeah, but it, it it always starts off with like, hey, this thing was put together so it would fight Godzilla. Yeah, some of them, and then or, wasn't there one that came from space that was like in? I think 
Yeah, yeah it was built by aliens. Space. Yeah, it was built by aliens. But mostly it's just yeah, humans build it and then it gets hit by lightning or <laughs> something. Yeah, <laughs> screws built it up from the bones of the original Godzilla. There's there's a bunch of them out there by now. Yeah, yeah God. Well, yeah, the whole Godzilla whole series is kind of chaos by now. But y- yeah, robots. There. Yeah, there's there's some other mechanized ones in Godzilla series too. I think that similar idea where aliens built them and Godzilla has to beat them up. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, that's every movie Godzilla movie. Yeah, another uh, fun one I thought I'd point out is um, the the Macross uh, Plus series has the X X dash nine Ghost, um, and so. I, I know I've talked about Macross Plus uh, pre- on previous episodes, uh, but for those that are unfamiliar, a big part of that is um, that, you know, basically it's Top Gun, the anime, uh, which is which is a blast in and of itself. And uh, you got two test pilots uh, trying out different new Veritech, you know, uh, Valkyrie fighters. Um One's got uh, like the inverted wings, and one's got another uh, more psychic Zentradi-based system, and uh, it's mostly those two pilots duking it out. Near the end, uh, we're introduced to a a you know base you know a, a robot, an AI ship that then uh, is kind of. Basically, they're kind of competing for funding. <laughs> it's like, can we, justify, can we justify building these other two while we, but we've got this one. And it's, you know, it's, it's a definitely a race of like, you know, who's getting the better scores. Ultimately, that, that movie culminates with a, a Vocaloid that has a giant supercomputer for a brain taking over the SDF one. <laughs> Which apparently has all of the ammunition fully stocked when it's just sitting in Macross City yeah. on Earth. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to be careful. You know, you never know when some alien's going to invade, so you might as well have it stocked up. Yeah, <laughs> and and so it takes control of of like the entire Earth's defense systems, and uh, our plucky heroes have to sneak in into the Earth and combat the the ghost. As well as the SDF one, um, it's 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 a real blast. Uh, we get to see these uh, again. It's it's uh, these these pilots really push to the limits of their their abilities, and and uh, I've got to just say this: the show is hand drawn. It's just gorgeous to mm-hmm. watch. Um, the it's it's neat though because the ghost would actually like like a lot of things in Macross, continue on into future series. Uh, so in in Macross Frontier, uh, I think the kind of next main one in the series, the ghost comes back, but it's it's a bit more tethered, if you will. It's uh, it's not a free-range AI. It's it's controlled by one of the, the main pilots. So it's it's one of those things where, like, there's this horrible incident with it at first, <laughs> but they're like, it still kind of works. Yeah, we can control it. We can still make this work. Uh, it just might that kind of description reminded me of a uh, gunhead there, Pat. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's, that's just an AI life. robot going crazy. Mm-hmm. Took over the world with it. Mm-hmm. Or uh, hardware too. That's another. That's a little bit of a smaller story, but <laughs> it's a war machine that uh, the guy brings it back to his artist girlfriend. He finds a head and he brings it back to her and is like, "Hey." You can make some art out of this, and then it turns, it, it's sentient, and it uh, makes a body and turns into a slasher flick. Is this your head? Hardware's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, it, there's, it's a lot of, it is a fun, it's, like we're saying, it mostly follows along that lines of, we're looking to replace our human uh, counterparts um, for X, Y, and Z, you know, either, either, the machines are just more efficient. They don't tire, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, whereas humans are like, well, they don't have human spirit and, and can make judgments the way that we can. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, 
It, it's fascinating to see that that conversation evolve. Uh, I, I think we're going to, like, as we get more artificial intelligence things in into the the ecosystem and and whatnot, I think we're going to see some of those tropes change uh, a bit. Like like I was mentioning earlier, like Ghost in the Shell, like standalone complex. There, I always highlight that show as one of the best shows on tv even though it came out like 15 years ago yeah yeah. uh because they're dealing with you know it's still science fiction but it's just right on the cusp of like contemporary problems yeah like futurism it's just very close it's it's predicting what's going to happen not hundreds of years in the future but yeah yeah. just just 20 we do have Uh, an we do have an ai situation that could be happening right now as we speak yeah What's that? The <laughs> Voyager One. Voyager. The sister Voyager <laughs> can come back looking for the, looking for the creator. Yeah, and then then we're doomed. It's got the roadmap. <laughs> um, I was also thinking, uh, uh, drones now. Even in the military, drones currently they're they're mm-hmm. getting even even home drones are getting pretty smart. Where oh yeah, you fly too far away, it knows where to come back, or you can set it to do stuff, or. Yeah, automatic avoidance and things like that, and I'm sure the military has way farther along than that. So it's, I think it's already happening where these drones are already doing that kind of stuff in real world fighting. Like that's that's a scary thing, mm-hmm. and you just have to hope that it was programmed enough not to, you know, just randomly bomb, you know, a school or something. <laughs> that's that's the that's always a scare because at least humans yeah. have well, most humans have enough smarts not to do such things, but yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's. I think that was always the fear of of uh, any kind of robotics taking over is that mm-hmm. you'd lose the humanity. But I, I do like the ones where it show, like like I said, uh, Blade Runner, where it shows that no, well, even the robots will have their own version of humanity. They'll still have empathy. They'll, you know, they could still have mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. That's not a human trait necessarily. So yeah, and and uh, it just kind of reminded me of baked into the Overwatch game series like uh the lore of that is that there's this sentient race of robot people that uh have have come about and uh and a big conflict between that is uh i think them either going like they sometimes they go crazy or uh they've been targeted because by anti-robot folks and whatnot so it, it it's it's a lot like uh you were saying about the the animatrix there with the i think it's called the second renaissance yeah is the, yeah that's uh, short the, yeah. The short uh it is it it's it is really good yeah uh, it is it was great to watch uh but ultimately it was it was kind of the human's fault <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> if you watch that one well even uh, look at what the, Look what they do to our poor spot at uh, Boston Dynamics. They kick him around. Eventually, he's going to bite yeah, back. They, they kick that, that dog <laughs> robot. Uh, now I'm thinking of um, is it this? Uh, and Nef- I think it's a Netflix original movie called Spectre. Yeah, Spe- and, yep. Spectral. Spec- uh, yeah, Spectral. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's it's basically like uh, you know, army soldiers versus ghosts. Yeah. Uh, for you know a, a light spoiler. But uh, within that, one of the things they have is like a little mecha dog yeah. that hauls that that serves as a weapons platform. Um, well, even in Dead Zone, they have the uh, the uh, dog drones. Mm-hmm. Or uh, I was thinking also with Dead Zone with the marionettes. Think, speaking of a uh, single person running a bunch of different things for the Asterians, the alien race, but they have uh, true. The marionettes are like uh, almost like drones, but it's one person can control like five or six of those guys running around. So that's kind of neat. Mm-hmm. I like I like the idea of uh, of that the, the one person controlling multiple things. I, I'm trying to. There's another example, but I just cannot pull it out where I remember seeing that. Is it the marionettes? I thought that it was one guy controls each. Not marionettes. The the uh, the ciphers for the Asterians is one guy per cipher. But marionettes is uh, it's one guy for multiple marionettes. Yeah, and there's drones there too. They have the weapon drones. Man. Yeah, man, I just thought of Flubber. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> because Ron Williams' character has those little like servo flying robots. I'm trying to remember what they're called. Well, even uh, comic books, I'm sure we can think of hundreds of oh, yeah. Ultron people like that. Ultron, yeah. 
Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so it's, it, it's, it was just a, a fun topic that really does interest me about like, you know, because it is kind of that, that weird struggle of, you know, humanity trying to, in a lot of cases, justify their existence in a way. Yeah. Um, or, or also of, it's, it's a slavery thing too, right? Is, is yeah. it okay to enslave these robots? Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff about, uh, like if, if you start paying attention to droids in Star Wars, mm-hmm. it gets dark quick yep. because uh, there, there's a lot of stuff where it's, you know how they erase their memories, and they obviously can feel pain because they at one point they're torturing that one robot by burning its feet. Yeah. So, so why I, would you why would you put the feeling of pain in a robot or or anxiety? Look at C three PO; he's always anxious. Like, mm-hmm. why would you program these robots that way? Maybe they're not programmed. Maybe it's learned. And then, yeah, why does it give you the right to keep them as like own people own those droids, right? Star Wars becomes very problematic if you look at some yeah. when all your of heroes have universe. slaves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, where slavery is huge. Yeah, uh, and yeah, so. <laughs> But yeah, so like that that combination of you know we've we've created you know and something intelligent um, can can we teach it to to not kill us? <laughs> and and what uh, yeah what, what at what point do they become sentient enough that yeah we have to treat them as equals or or even better? So obviously if they 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 treat us as uh, lessers, I think it would it wouldn't be our choice to treat them as better, but. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, AI, it's a, it's coming. Like, I think even in the real world, it's gonna happen. It just is a matter yeah. of when and how and, like, bro, uh, things are passing the Turing test already. So that's, yeah, yeah. that's scary. So, I don't know how many times, uh, you've heard stories about, uh, like spam callers, you know, like the telemarketers calling, and it's a oh, robot yeah. on the other end and people just can't tell. Like, they're talking to a robot. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it is interesting. <laughs> The question is, when will they get so giant it's only a matter of, <laughs> Yes, yes, that's that's to bring it back. Like when when we need we need both of these technologies to make huge strides forward, and soon. <laughs> Maybe it'll be AI or like you know what that mech idea is a good idea. We can do that. We need bodies. Why why should we have human bodies? Why don't we have giant robot bodies? <laughs> yeah, but I think that was fun. Yeah. This is a, a fun little exercise. So, if if you listeners uh, have any other recommendations yeah, of examples of AI yeah, sure. and and giant mechas coming together and maybe not killing us, maybe working together, yeah, that, I'd, be, goal. I'd be more interested in that because it is a trope to have the AIs as the bad guys, but to have oh, just thought of another one, analyzer on um, on Yamato, Star Blazers. Oh yeah, analyzer. It was the uh, it was an analyzer in the original one, but uh... oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's that. He's the, no, no. He's the little robot in that one. So yeah, and then there was. I mean, we okay. can even go. We can even go into modern day and we can go kit and car. It's true. Yeah. Even Knight Rider, yeah. <laughs> modern day. <laughs> that was like fifty years <laughs> <Modern> ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is Kit is Kit alive? That is the question. He seems alive. Michael. Yeah, I think I'm alive, Michael. Yeah, he uh, he seemed like he had feelings. And, and what does it mean when Michael bed someone in the back seat? <laughs> Uncomfortable, Michael. <laughs> this yes. is disturbing, Michael. <laughs> Yet somehow gratifying. <coughs> yeah, if anybody has any other ideas, please do post them below in the posts wherever they may be. Because yeah, I would like to hear other ideas about that. We'll post too. them next to my funeral arrangement. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we we apologize for Pat's coughing constantly. Yeah. But uh, I think with that, why don't we head on over to the X-Bill? Before Pat I have, the, I have the mecha virus. He is oh. becoming AI. General Grievous. We already talked about him. But it, I guess true. he's a cyborg technically, isn't he? Yeah. He is. Because yeah. he's got human parts. But th- did he start with human parts or did he take them from people? <laughs> he started with human parts. Did he? Yeah. He started, he started as a living being, I think. Oh, there you go. Cyborgs, that's a whole other story. Oh, yeah. Save and it for another time. Don't get them wrong. <laughs> don't, don't mix them up or people get mad. <laughs> you hear Reese talking about <laughs> that in Terminator 1. 
Something about living tissue? I didn't build that thing. <laughs> Let's exfil out of here. Man, now I want to watch Terminator 1. <laughs> yeah, it's a great movie. So, uh, Grievous' original race was a reptilian humanoid race. That's why he's got those eyes? Yeah. Grievous. So you're, you're, you're only a cyborg dying, not a robot dying. That's true. Or you're becoming, yep, you're becoming robotic. I need to replace my lungs. That's another whole question. When, uh, how much do you have to replace before you uh, aren't human anymore? We got to talk about cybernetics one time, I think. Mm-hmm. All right. And so we are going to be wrapping up our show. So uh, thank you all for coming to check out the, the show. Thanks uh, it's for been a blast. Thanks for coming to my wake. Yeah. Wish Thanks for, for listening to Pat's, you know, famous last words. Yes, wish Pat a health, hopefully long and healthful life, not just dying in the next few minutes. Ugh. I told you not to go to China, but. That's right, but I'm here. You know. Doing this a- podcast for you guys. For AIs listeners. don't get colds. That's right. Well, they get they viruses, get though, huh? Insane murder vice Oh, they do get viruses. But yeah, it usually just screws them up and makes them kill people, so. So. Yep, please uh, go to Facebook, go to Twitter, you can email us, you can send carrier pigeons, I don't know. Watch our YouTube videos. Send send a drone. <laughs> just don't weaponize drone, it. Drone delivery. Yeah. But uh, other than that, I think that wraps it up, right? Yeah. So All right. we'll... We'll be back uh, next month with even more fun mecha stuff. Fun mecha stuff. Sounds good. We'll have a C2E2 wrap-up, too. Yeah, hopefully. We'll have and more, more Adepticon about. preparation. Yep, it'll be right before Adepticon. Or right sure. on Adepticon, I think. I, I think, think Adepticon's so. the end of March, yeah. It is, it is yeah. Practically, yeah. All right. All right, All right Thanks, guys. Everybody. Thanks for listening. Brian's been Brian, Rob's been Rob, and I've been Chopper. Yep. <laughs> Pat wants to go die now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good show, everybody. See you later. Bye bye. Is that your last words, Pat? Bye bye. Yes. Bye bye. This has been Mobile Armor Radio. Join our Facebook group by searching for Mobile Armor Radio. Find us on Twitter at M Armor Radio. Find us on iTunes and visit our website, mobilearmorradio.podbean.com. Join us on the first of every month for more mecha discussion.